Welcome to the Exercise Science Playlist, an evidence-based communication of concepts presented in an open-ended way where I'm not telling you what you must do, but for you to critically think about issues and apply to yourself. Protein powders are valid supplements. They can be used for convenience, maybe for that nutrition when you're out and about and you can't access a meal, maybe whilst traveling, maybe they're convenient in relation to your job and your commute. They can be used to increase your protein intake, your macronutrient intake, or your calorie intake over a day. There are many reasons why people may choose to buy a protein powder, but, and importantly, it is not a magic supplement. You do not need protein powder to grow muscle. You can grow muscle by just eating whole foods with, of course, protein within those meals. And when I say you may take protein powder for convenience, I don't mean a timing necessity. For example, some imaginary countdown timer post-workout where if you do not intake protein, all the work you've done in the gym is wasted or an intra-workout window during your session where you have to take protein powder. Protein timing is far more nuanced than that. However, again, everything on a spectrum. So if someone's a physique competitor and have to eke out every last inch of muscle gain and peak for a specific show, then of course their nutrient timing may be more intricate than the regular person who's just looking to build muscle. If someone is an athlete, then of course their nutrient timing may be more intricate than just the regular person looking to in develop their fitness. If someone is natural or enhanced, that's another consideration. And in this specific video, I'm gonna touch on age as one issue to consider in relation to a meta-analysis. A quick summary of how protein intake helps with muscle growth. Protein synthesis is the process of building up a protein. Amino acids form a protein. Building up these amino amino acids is protein synthesis. And therefore you need effective protein synthesis for effective muscle growth. And that is an anabolic process. And I have in-depth videos on protein synthesis and how muscles grow in this series. And I have one summary video at the end, which essentially involves everything. So if you want an all-in-one video, watch that one. And importantly, when it comes to the protein intake, you need all nine essential amino acids for effective protein synthesis. And the majority of protein powders do have all nine essential amino acids. How However, you get other protein supplements, for example, BCAAs, which only have three of the essential amino acids, which is not an effective way to hack the process. And you also get essential amino acid supplements, which would be a better choice than a BCAA supplement. Protein intake through nutrition is really important for you to grow muscle. However, the problem is in many areas of the fitness industry, how much protein you need is massively overstated. Now, the cynic in me could say that this is because it's very hard for the regular person if they believe these huge numbers to achieve that goal and therefore they feel that they must buy the extra supplements to get towards that goal and these people that are giving them these massive numbers happen to sell these supplements. I have a video discussing how much protein to take, protein timing and also the hierarchy of protein importance in this video so if you want that information I've linked that down below. And so when we come to protein supplementation there are many types. We have the protein powders, the most common supplement if you like. We have the whey concentrate. You then have the whey isolate, which is a more filtered version of whey protein where it removes the fats and the carbs. A whey isolate will be more expensive to purchase than concentrate. But again, many people take carbohydrates with their protein shake. And so actually buying the more expensive isolate may not actually fit them. It may not be necessary. Strictly speaking, it is a cleaner product. Yes. But for you, it may not be worth your extra money. You also have casein protein or casein protein, I can never say it correctly. And I have an entire video dedicated to that where I go into depth into that specific form of protein. But the main takeaway is you do not need casein protein to build muscle while you sleep. You absolutely can take it if that's your personal preference, but it is not mandatory to build muscle during sleep. But casein protein is a slower digesting protein. The whey concentrate and whey isolates are faster digesting proteins. You then have plant-based protein and hemp protein and many forms of non-whey protein, which people may take if they're on a specific eating protocol, of course, where dairy is not part of their diet. Protein bars, which are essentially junk food to disguised as health products. That chocolate and peanut butter protein bar is a chocolate and peanut butter bar 
with protein added to it. If you look at the ingredients, you're going to have high amounts of sugars and also saturated fats and other things. But of course, there's a range. Some protein bars will be cleaner than others. Just be very careful with these ready to consume protein supplements, which are marketed as health supplements. In many cases, they just ain't. And the same applies to that 7-Eleven, if you like, ready to drink protein drink. Again, some are cleaner than others. Some are just essentially milkshakes with protein in them. And then you get types of protein powder, which are a matrix they have a mix of concentrate and isolate and maybe soy or other forms of protein in there but importantly no matter what the protein powder is you have to try and think about how much protein is in there per scoop if you take the scooper how much protein is in that scoop and how much other gunk is in there how much filler artificial flavorings other stuff preservatives that they put in there and the only way to know that is to read the labels of the specific product some are better than others some are cleaner than others an unflavored protein may have of course less sugars and artificial flavorings than a flavored protein and what you can actually do is do a calculation and i've done one here and you can see how much protein is in a scoop of these protein powders. And so those are issues for you to consider and to the research. And so meta-analysis is the highest form of evidence. It is essentially a research paper which takes multiple pieces of research into a topic, it analyzes it and it communicates the outcomes. This is far better, for example, than just one piece of research into a topic or someone's opinion. And importantly, a meta-analysis has entry requirements for the research that it analyzes or what it calls inclusion criteria. And so essentially it filters out out the junk pieces of research and analyzes the higher quality pieces of research to give us higher quality information. And so this paper is from 2017 and it takes high quality information. It's a highly in-depth very good meta-analysis into protein supplementation. There are some very familiar researchers here, Krieger, Stu Phillips, Schoenfeld, Henselmans, it's like an all-star team. And so this paper ended up analyzing 49 studies involving 1,863 people. You can instantly see how this would be more useful than just one piece of research, for example. The present meta-analysis includes more than double the number of studies and participants than the largest published comprehensive meta-analysis on protein supplementation during our RET to date. A total of 49 studies from 17 countries met the inclusion criteria. There were 10 studies in resistance trained participants and 14 study groups in exclusively female participants. And importantly, exercise science into certain areas can lack female participants. And so here are the practical takeaways of the meta-analysis for you. Dietary protein supplementation during RET is more effective at increasing changes in fat-free mass in resistance trained individuals and less effective in older individuals. Protein supplementation beyond a total protein intake of 1.6 grams per kilograms per day during resistance training provided no further benefit on gains in muscle mass or strength. And so this meta-analysis concluded that protein supplementation can have a positive effect on muscle mass for people who resistance train. However, of course, with nuance, that supplementing protein above a certain amount of protein intake provides no further gains, that issue of a diminishing point of return. And so if you are hitting your adequate protein intake with just food, for example, then adding protein powder on top of that, based on what we're seeing, it's not actually gonna give you further gains in muscle mass. And here is a discussion from the authors which I think really nicely wraps up this video. Dietary protein supplementation augments changes in muscle mass and strength during prolonged resistance training. Protein supplementation is more effective at improving fat-free mass in young or resistance-trained individuals than in older or untrained individuals. Protein supplementation is sufficient at 1.6 grams per kilogram per day in healthy adults during resistance training. Based on limited data, we observe no overtly apparent sex-based differences, but acknowledge that far less work has been done in women than men. This analysis shows that dietary protein supplementation can be, if protein intake is less than 1.6 grams protein per day, both sufficient and necessary to optimize resistance training induced changes in fat-free mass. And so that comes back to my introductory statement. You do not need protein powder, but if your daily protein intake is lower than your goal, than your adequate intake amount, for, for some reason, it may be that you're out and about all day, maybe your job is extremely intense and you just can't cook those meals or whatever it may be, then protein supplementation can be very useful to increase your protein intake to your desired goal. Going above that goal, again, does not show further benefits, but meeting your goals, 
is absolutely a legitimate reason you may intake protein powder. I hope this was a useful, concise video that may help you with this issue. I'm James Linker. This is Shredder Sports Science. I'll see you soon. Life's a struggle with little beautiful surprises that make you want to carry on to the next little beautiful surprise.